That's what I mean. Wide. Don't look at the bags under my eyes. Oh my goodness. I put uh, I put like, it was like eye patches on my eyes this morning. I was feeling it. What's up, party people? Hey. You need a, Sorry, I'll sit up for you. No, you're fine. I'm in here in case you move around. <laughs> Which will happen. <laughs> Un uh, unintentionally. Jacob gets so mad when he has to be my photographer. Uh, yeah, yeah. Jacob Morris, he's like, stop wiggling. You sway. I sway and I oh, like, yeah. wiggle during live shots. And he's like, stop moving. Same I was here, like, right I don't before. Mean to, I'm sorry. <laughs> Brad's like, stop moving. I know. <laughs> Brad Horn. You guys are ready? Okay. All right, here we go. In three, two, one. Well, obviously, we've got Alyssa Orange <laughs> here. Finally, welcome back, Thanks. by the way. It's, it's great to be home. Uh, happy my fob still works, trying to get into the building to <laughs> yeah. come see you guys and visit. Uh, but it's been uh, it's been incredible to be back, but it's still really hard to wrap my head around, you know, what I got to experience the last three weeks. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. But first of all, we want to go way back. We yeah. want to go to when you first heard mm -hmm. the announcement that you were going to be representing uh, K&WA and Next Star. In yeah, Paris. Uh, so I kind of got word that my name had been thrown into a hat to possibly be me on this Olympic team, uh, which was very exciting. And then a couple interviews uh, with some corporate people. And then um, I remember Lisa Kelsey being like, hey, I need you to come to my office and grab something. And I was like, okay. Uh, and then I walk in and, and our news director, Josh, is there with uh, Jerry Walsh uh, from corporate who heads these projects and was with us in, in Paris. Uh, and I've worked with Jerry before on some Super Bowl projects, and he was on the screen, and it was a congratulations. Um, we we would love for you to be on the team. Oh, that's and, awesome. Uh, yeah, you know, I'm not an emotional person, um, but I I just was so grateful and uh, overwhelmed in that moment. And then it was like, okay, now you got to go keep it a secret. So I remember leaving that office being like, how am I not supposed to tell anybody? <laughs> you know, I got to tell my husband, but like no one in the building knew. Um, and that was a hard secret to keep for about like a month, honestly. Um, and then of course it came out in September and, and, you know, we hit the ground running and, you know, we got to cover these Olympics for the last three weeks, but it was so much more than that. We spent a year putting stories together and building relationships with these athletes and telling their stories. And you could tell when we were there in Paris, those relationships mattered. And I think that was one of the coolest things, not just the relationships that I built with the athletes that I was telling stories with, but all of the Razorbacks that were there that I'd covered over the years, even Nikki Hiltz, who I covered years and years and years ago, um, they were in the 1500 and I got to interact with them. And uh, Tara Davis Woodhull, who didn't go to the university, but she trains here with her husband who did. And so those kind of connections and those relationships really paid dividends once we were there. Yeah. And I, a lot of people, you know, for the first time on a national stage are seeing these Razorback yeah. athletes because maybe they didn't follow Razorback mm -hmm. track as much. But and you should now. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, they're amazing. Yes. How many championships now? But uh, well, there's a flag that says 51. <laughs> 51. So I think that's where we're at. Now. Yeah, that's incredible. It's yeah. just an, uh, amazing. But yeah, one of the things that we love about your coverage is that it was so personal you know it's like a lot of people were covering the Olympics and they had lots of reporters but you had that intimate connection with mm -hmm. the Razorback athletes and I think that really helped tell the story um, what else was that what, uh, what other advantages did you get from that those connections yeah I think just you know I wish I could explain to people like mix zone be like well what, what is that and I for track for example because I spent most of the second half of the Olympics there at the track we are set up in a spot uh, where right at the finish line, there's just bleachers of media. And you've got, you know, your, your NBCs and BBCs and French TV down at the front. And these athletes, when they're done racing, have to walk through this mix zone is what they call it. And it's like up a ramp and around. Like, can you imagine just sprinting the, you know, 100 meters? And now you've got to walk up this <laughs> ramp and talk to all these people. And we're in the very back. Uh, and so by the time some athletes get to us, one, they're tired of talking because they've been on this platform for 25 minutes or so, um, or, or, you know, things haven't gone the way that they did and they're just tired. Uh, but it was really cool. I mean, when Tara won and I, I saw her get her gold medal the next day, when she saw me, she ran over and gave me a big hug. Like Amber Anning gave me a hug, Jaden Hibbert, just the recognition on their faces when I said, you know, hello and Got to talk to them was really really cool, and then at the end I'd always be like, "Can I get a woo pig?" So I got a woo pig. I was like really excited. I got a couple woo pigs, and like that was the joke with the rest of our team. I, when I wasn't at track, 
I'd get text message in our group chat that was like, just talk to Roger, got a woo pig. Got a pig, huh? <laughs> so that was like they your, kept my woo pigs going. Yeah. It was like your Paris pin <laughs> trading. It yes. was like a woo pig trading. That's I, I, I should have brought my pins. Those were so fun, made so many connections. But yeah, uh, being able to see them have success at the highest level in their sport was really cool. And I think, like you said, you know, being so exotic, and then it's like, whoa, a familiar yeah. face. Yeah. And so that that's just awesome. Sure. Okay, so now we learned that you're going to Paris, yeah. and the whole station found out about it. We're going to go back again. <laughs> what did you do to prepare to mm -hmm. go to Paris? Yeah, well, there's just a, there a lot of meetings. Uh, you're meeting with your team. We flew out to New York twice to just have in-person meetings, and one of those included the media summit where we're just making connections. And a lot of it is just connections, connections, meeting people, sending emails, just putting your name out there so that when we were on the ground, it was like, oh yeah, Alyssa, I've had an email with you. Um, or, hey, you know, uh, I want to get into Team USA. And one of our team members, Matt, had great connections with that. So we got into the, you know, the USA house with Team USA and got to do that kind of tour. And, um, you know, one of the coolest connections was uh, former Razorback assistant, now head coach at Kansas State, Travis Gepfert went to the practice facility where everyone really but the United States practices, but a lot of uh, Razorbacks were practicing there because their coaches like Chris Johnson and Coach Gepford coach other international athletes. So they were all there at the track and got to see some familiar faces there. But then later in the afternoon, uh, Carl Lewis is out there working with his athletes from the University of Houston. And I remember like, oh my God, that's Carl, like, that's Carl Lewis, right? And I got to, I talked to Travis like later. I was like, hey, do you think like Carl would do an interview? He's like, yeah, I'll just go talk to him. And so he went up and, and then, you know, Carl came over and said hello and was just so nice and graceful with his time and talked to me for a few minutes. And it was really cool not only to talk to him about being here and being at the Olympics, coaching these young athletes, but you know, I got to ask him about opening ceremonies. Like, and he goes, you know, it was crazy. We show up, they tell us, uh, we need you to go to this room, but we're not going to tell you why. We're just going to do something. <laughs> so he's got all the, you know, it's Nadal and yeah. Carl Lewis and um, and Serena Williams, and they're all in this room, and they're like, okay, what are we doing? Like, they had no idea. And then they put him on a boat. And, <laughs> and you yeah. know, it was in really the rain. cool. Right. <laughs> yeah. But he was like, I had no idea what I was supposed to be doing. Uh, and so, like, you know, that that interview I got because of uh, the relationship that I had with some of the Razorback coaches. And so it was really cool to see um, that behind kind of, the scenes because yeah. we didn't know about that. You know, we saw the opening ceremonies mm -hmm. um, and we saw, you know, the the group of, uh, it, um, you know, gymnasts, mm -hmm. athletes, tennis players, you know, the, the top of the top pinnacle athletes. And then, you know, Carl yeah. Lewis, like you said, and everybody's on that boat and they're carrying the torch. And, yeah. and, and it was just uh, surreal. And it's like, mm -hmm. how did that happen? I, they didn't even know yeah. it was going to happen. And I was I was like, wow, can you imagine just showing up and you're dressed really nice? Like Serena had that beautiful red gown on. Yeah. It's like, OK, we're going to stick you on a boat in the rain. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. It was incredible. It was fun. So I want to go to opening ceremonies. We, yeah. you, you land in Paris, and, sure. and I'm sure that's just overwhelming to mm -hmm. see and everything. But uh, opening ceremonies, you are you have a yeah pristine spot right, right in front of the Eiffel Tower. Yeah. The light show to me was incredible. <laughs> the laser, yeah. I was just like, wow. That was I've really got cool. I've got videos that I've rewatched on my camera uh, or on my phone, and I don't know exactly what you guys got to see versus what we're seeing there in person because you guys. Got to see the whole entire ceremony where, you know, when it started, when those rockets went off over the bridge with all the different colors of the French flag, that was way, way down the sin. And so like way over there. And we're just kind of barely seeing everything because we're blocked off by the Trocadero and the museum. But I've got the Eiffel Tower right there. And so once things started to happen at the Eiffel Tower, that was the light show, for example. I mean, Celine Dion, are you kidding oh, me? Oh, that, that was. I told our team members, I said, her album... Um, falling into you was the first cassette tape that I ever owned, right? Like it's Celine Dion, and it was. Just, I mean, I'm getting goosebumps. It was just incredible. Uh, me too. I mean, me it was too. incredible. And she's right. I mean, she's right there, and um, that was really, really cool. And the whole thing was so fun to be a part of. Now we got locked in that TV tower at 1 p.m. and we weren't allowed to leave, and we were there till about 1 a.m. But it was worth it. Is that for security purposes? For security yeah. reasons. Yeah. The security around that area where we were, which is called the Trocadero, that's where NBC's compound was, right there across from the Eiffel Tower. 
the security was incredible, especially leading up to opening ceremonies. I mean, it still was really, really good after, but we left the compound before opening ceremonies, about two days before, to just go walk down the street to look at a different angle. Then we came back. The French president was on his way, and we got locked out of this with all oh, our wow. credentials for three hours. Because, the, I mean, that's how crazy security was. And we're showing our, we had to show our, our passports and our credentials and a different identification. I mean, it was very, very top notch. And you could feel the security at that games. And, and you know, a lot of people ask me about safety, but I, um, it, it wasn't overwhelming. It wasn't in your face, but you knew that uh, nothing was going to happen. They were, they were watching over it very yeah. closely. Yeah. yeah. That's Celine Dion performance. Oh I'm just my going gosh, back to just that. Crazy. I mean, you talk about one of the biggest stages and the fact that, you know, she had that neurological mm -hmm. disorder. She and hasn't that sang was, publicly that was, since 2019. I know. That was yeah. like the first time. And to be on top of the Eiffel <laughs> Tower in front of the world, in yeah. front of Paris, yeah. and she just crushed yeah, it. Yeah, it, it, was, it was awesome. So it, it, it started great, it ended great. And, um, you know, it's it's so funny. I caught myself about halfway through. We drove around that that loop around the Arc de Triomphe every day. We were either going to the Arc to do interviews, or we were going to the Trocadero, to the TV Tower, or just wherever we were, because we were right down the street. Our hotel was, and I caught myself halfway through, like in these Ubers. Um, it was really funny. I got home and I was like, I haven't driven in three weeks. <laughs> it's, it's weird. You don't want to drive in Which, Paris. Yeah, no, you don't. <laughs> Especially around that Arc de Triomphe. It's crazy. Yeah. Um, like not looking at my window because I'd seen it so often and I had to like snap out of it and be like, Alyssa, like look out the window. It's still the Arc de Triomphe. Like you're still in Paris. Yeah. Like I, it's almost like, wow, I've gotten used to this. All the, you know, art deco and just it's, everything it's all over. I mean, it's beautiful. Yeah. It's incredible. The just Paris in itself. I mean, I know they were putting their best foot forward um, during the Olympic games, uh, but just the architecture, the street cafes, I'm going to find anybody got a croissant recommendation in Northwest <laughs> Arkansas, let a girl know because I'm going to miss my croissants. Um, but I remember being on the last day, we were doing a river cruise uh, as a team as like a, you know, final uh, send off. And we're going down and passing uh, Notre Dame and it's still under renovation from the fires. But you start to realize that like I'm passing a building that's older than my country. Mm -hmm. And it's just and that's like that wow holy cow it, i got that all the time over in paris it was my first time in europe and it was really special and how were the french were they very nice they or, were yeah, they yeah. honestly they were i they didn't have, have a little anyone. bit of a reputation yeah right? i did and again a lot of the parisians will take vacation this time of the year anyways mm -hmm. so I, I get that uh but everyone was very very sweet you know the bonjour merci uh you know i would try to start at least to say something mm -hmm. in French and then they would quickly speak <laughs> they would know me, they would which know. was very 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 <laughs> very nice um, but I would try I would at least say bonjour mm -hmm. <laughs> bonjour c'est va and so and yeah. then they hear they're like man she doesn't uh, speak a okay. lot of French she's so like we'll, American we'll yes speak. okay we'll, okay. we'll speak can English. I just can I get a coffee and a donut thanks <laughs> <laughs> like, I try <laughs> at Le Petit Brasserie huh yeah the, some of the things some of the menus at those cafes was like uh, that that I have that. That's funny. <laughs> but it was, it really was incredible, Dan. I, uh, it's hard, you know, you have the whole experiencing Paris and then experiencing the Olympics. And I think what was so special was um, the team that I was with, one, just made it um, an incredible experience. I couldn't have asked for seven other people to spend this experience with uh, in a team aspect. But um, a handful of our teammates and Jayla and Matt and Lena, even though this was their third or second games, they had Tokyo and Beijing where there were no fans. And so it was almost the first true Olympic experience for them too. And just to be in that atmosphere and to feel the joy and the passion and the pride for all of these people in all of these different countries. I mean, there are flags from places I had never even heard of before. And they're there for the same reason, to cheer on their country and to win medals. And I mean, it was absolutely incredible to just be around and to witness. And 
you had to be a small part of. So I, it's hard to put into words, but yeah. it was really cool. The Parade of Nations, you see all the mm -hmm. Americans, you know, the U sure. United States boat had a ton, but there was some yeah. that one Only person. Eight or yeah, six. Or, or right. one. You know, right. there was one person in the country. And I know there were several medals that were won where mm -hmm. it was the first time for this country yeah. to ever win a medal. I mean, you think about the 100 meters and Shakari Richardson had yeah. all of the hype going into that one. And then you had Jillian Alford win, who went to Texas, and she won the Bowerman, just like Jaden Hibbert did, but won the very first medal for St. Lucia. Yeah. It was a gold medal, and it was incredible. That was incredible. She's yeah. fast, that's for yes, sure. But, you know, she Shakari Richardson, she got her gold yes. in the 4 by 100 which yeah. was excited. That was um, awesome. So, yeah, that was yeah. exciting. Um, I want to ask you about the, the um, actual events. Like, yeah. I know you were working a lot because, obviously, <laughs> you're doing all the, the live reports for mm -hmm. us. And the time difference, too. We'll, mm -hmm. we'll get to that here in just a bit. But uh, tell me, what was your favorite event oh, when you went to? Oh, yeah. Um, so a couple different things. I mean, track was cool because of the connections, right? So track was special. Uh, beach volleyball was, it, it was incredible. And we had a guy on our staff, Jack, who is, this is his 13th Olympic Games. He's like the godfather. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And he said, this is the best venue I've ever been to. I mean, just iconic right there at the base of the Eiffel Tower. I went for the first time during the day and got to see a day uh, game. But you walk in, and it's, it's beach volleyball. There are palm trees. They've got a party deck. There's music. There's a DJ um, hyping everybody up, telling everyone what to do. And then we went out there at night. And like Tom Brady's over there with his daughter. And I was just telling our news director that I, uh, they started a conga line. And so I like hopped into the conga line because I was like, if I get in with this Tom conga Brady? line, well, he wasn't in it, <laughs> okay. but I said, if I hop into this conga line, I'm gonna get around to the other side of the arena and see Tom Brady, walk right by Tom Brady. I don't even like Tom Brady. Well, but you'll like, pull what? him in there. You'll pull <laughs> like, in the goat. Yeah. Right. So I hop in, I've got a video of me hopping into this conga line, you know, and, and it was at night and the lights and it was, it was so fun. And I, I've never been in a venue uh, quite like that before. And it's not, I'm not trying to say it's better than being at like an SEC football game. It's just, it's different. It was there. I mean, it's obviously countries yes. that, that are competing against countries. And like you said, the backdrop, could you see it from your, your platform, the, the volleyball? We, we could see, it's on the other side okay. of the Eiffel Tower. So yes, okay. so you could hear it when mm -hmm. it was happening, um, but to be in it yeah. is a little different. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. What was the most unique event that you went to, Ooh. different event? like? Yeah, so I went to um, 3x3 basketball, which mm -hmm. was cool. I mean, swimming was cool, too, getting to talk to Katie Ledecky. I mean, that that stuff is, like, you know, bucket list. Yeah. I, I ran into Michael Phelps going in I and out of that. the TV tower, yeah. so I got a selfie with Michael Phelps. Like, that stuff was, was cool. Um, 3x3 basketball and that whole little urban park that they had where BMX and skateboarding, and that's where they did break dancing later on in the games. Um, was just really cool to be into because it's kind of those like X game esque sports that people don't really think about. Uh, but those three X three basketball games are like quick. Like yeah, they 15, were. They were like fast. Like fifteen minutes long. You're like there and then it's over. And you're like, oh gosh, okay. Uh, what's was, the status of Jimmer Fredette? Like I didn't even get to see half of this stuff because I'm trying to figure out where to go. So, but it was fun. It was fast scoring too, as well. It is. Did you get to see the uh, the Turkish uh, sharpshooter at all? I did no. not. <laughs> I did not. But I thought it was really funny that a lot of the track and field athletes were like doing his like hand in the pocket. Hand stance. in the pocket. Yeah. yeah it was both cool. eyes I open. Love, yeah. 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 Just like gold right, medal. Yep, right. It was, it was pretty <laughs> great. I was like, see, that's. That's a classic. I thought it was awesome. Yeah, there were a lot of memes from that, that's for sure. So <laughs> yeah. what were some other memories? Uh, okay, well, wait, I want to go mm -hmm. back real quick to the time difference. Oh, okay. So, right. Okay, so, so when you were on seven hours ahead, that's yeah, when Paris was so, so when I, when you guys saw me live at 5, um, right at five, the end of our 5 o'clock newscast, which was 5.30, uh, is 1230 uh, in Paris. So we were getting off at 12:30 a.m., packing up and getting off the TV tower by about 1 a.m. So by the time I got home and um, was able to call my kids and my husband. It's like right at that sweet spot of like 6:30, 7 o'clock back here. So that's the time difference. As you made a stop at McDonald's, right? We did. Well, <laughs> yes. There was the McDonald's is a whole other thing. And if oh, you haven't it is. seen it, it was delicious. Um, you got a lot of that content online, by the way. You got to check <laughs> yeah, it out if you haven't seen it. The McDonald's, the food tour that Lena and I got to do was so so fun. I mean, going up to Montmartre was beautiful, and Sacre Coeur up there, really really pretty. Uh, view of Paris from up there uh, but yeah I mean sometimes you have to go into the hotel lobby and you know unwind from the mm -hmm. day it's mm -hmm. okay 
And, and, and like you said, McDonald's is a totally <laughs> different animal. It was right across the street from the hotel. Too. I mean, they have like gourmet food at McDonald's. Yes. It's crazy. Yes, so. the potato wedges with the cheese was incredible. I mean, they put caramel popcorn on their McFlurries. So now that you got back, uh, yeah. we covered the Olympics. You had one day off to sightsee on I did. Sunday, I did. Um, at the, which was the closing ceremonies mm -hmm. day, and uh, didn't have to do anything mm -hmm. work related. What was the travel back like? Yeah, um, not terrible. I mean, an eight hour flight. I left at like five o'clock in Paris time um, and tried to stay awake. So lots of movies. I watched a couple movies. Watched Boys in the Boat. Enjoyed that. Um, and then got to Atlanta, and Atlanta was something else. I mean, I handed to, to Delta to make sure that we got home on time because we board this first plane, and of course, I've got like an hour to get off of this international flight, go through customs, recheck my bags yeah. into domestic, and then go back through security and to my gate. And if you've been through Atlanta, it's huge. Um, so I like run to my gate, we're boarding, and then it's, oh, we have a hydraulic leak, we've got to deboard the plane. Ugh. Go to a new gate. And then we all board that plane. And it's, uh, hey guys, this plane's not gonna get us there either. We gotta get on another plane. So we deboard again. And then we wait for a third plane and we finally get on that plane. And he gets over the intercom and goes, well, there was a little mechanical issue here, but we fixed it. We're just doing some paperwork and we'll get out of here soon. So <laughs> we'll we see if it flies. Yeah, we finally <laughs> left Atlanta and landed uh, at XNA. Um, around like 2.30 in the morning on Tuesday. And you had a little bit of a surprise. I did, when you my got kids, home. yeah, I thought they'd be asleep, but I'm, I'm happy that I got to got to see them and, and my husband woke me up for that, or yeah. woke them up for, for that. And uh, yeah, they were wide, I mean, they were wide awake um, and they were great to see. I love that, love yeah. that uh, scene. That's also <laughs> uh, another video that we have. We we yeah. covered Alyssa, and she covered everything with the Olympics yeah. and, and everything else. Yeah, I, I, and that was my goal. I wanted you guys to come around like along on the ride with me and be able to experience a little bit of what I'm experiencing too. And I know that my phone and my videos and photos can't do it all justice, but I'm glad that you guys got to come along on that ride because um, it was special, I think, not only for um, the station and, and for myself, but also for our viewers because um, – you know, the Razorback connections that we have. And, and even Haley Batten, who won a silver medal in cycling and mountain biking, they practice here. They train here in Fayetteville, or in Bentonville. Um, and to have her and that connection was, was really cool. So hopefully, did you guys proud? Yeah, you did. All right, so now, final question here. Okay. L.A. 2028. <laughs> well, <laughs> it's coming up. Yeah, no, four years in L.A. Um, man, those L.A. games are going to be so fun. Um, softball and slalom canoe in Oklahoma City. So they're not far. They're going to be in Oklahoma City. The rest of the games are going to be in L.A. Uh, but there is the Winter Games in Milan. Yeah, that's right. That's true. So that's uh, 2026. Milan. We'll see what that sounds good. We'll see what happens, but one step at a time. Well, you did an amazing job, Thanks, and and glad to have Thanks. you back. It's so good to be sure. back. Yeah. I, I missed you guys. I missed my team. I went to football practice this morning, just to be like, I gotta see something. <laughs> I got to see what's going on down at fall camp because I haven't been, obviously. So it was good to kind of poke my head in there, and, and they let me in. And so, yeah, football season right to, around the corner. You'll be hitting that line else. soon. Yeah. yeah. So, well, thank you so much. Yeah, Alyssa. Dan, thanks so much. Awesome. 30 minutes. That's just about what they said. So. Great, great, great. Is that all right? Will that yeah. work? Yeah. Okay. Thanks, dude.